Hello, hello and welcome back to the Immigrant Programmers channel. My name is Kritika and if you are a new viewer, you won't notice anything different but our old subscribers and old viewers, you must notice something different in our studio. So this is our new temporary studio because uh, we just moved into a new house, our house and we need to change a lot of stuff, we need to do a lot of um, revamping. So for now, bear with the studio. So coming back to the topic, this video is the fourth video in my series of ORM. So, so far I've just covered SQL based ORMs and in this video I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to cover a no SQL ORM, so which is the ORM for Mongo database known as Mongoose. So it's a very easy to understand, straightforward and a schema based ORM where you define different schemas for your collections and uh, it's easy to insert uh, documents as well so, and if you don't know the mongo lingo so far don't worry we're going to use the same lingo same jargon throughout the video and i'm going to explain you what each of these terms mean and if you don't know what orms are and if you're directly watching this video in my orm series and you want to check out like different SQL based orms i've covered in the past go uh, check the different videos the link will be down in the description below and you might also be seeing the links flashing here so go check them out um, but before watch this video till the end so in this video as well I'm gonna use the same structure that I've been following in my previous ORM videos so I'm gonna have two collections the customer and the order collection and the customer and the order collection are connected to each other they're associated to each other by a one-to-many relationship so uh, one customer can have many orders okay so without any further ado let's get coding Okay, so as usual, I already have the project structure set up so that we don't waste any time on the less important things and just focus on the more important things at hand. Now, in this video, we're going to use a NoSQL database and the database is MongoDB. So we're going to use an ORM to access that database, which is called as Mongoose. So first things first, we need to install the Mongoose package. So for that, you just go npmi or npm install whatever you prefer and then you type the name of the package which is mongoose go ahead and hit enter i already have it so i'm not going to do it so uh, once you have this package installed we will be good to go okay so now that we have the mongoose package the first step would be to establish a database connection so to do this i'm going to run the mongodb in my local server so like on, on the local host so i just require the mongoose package here and i create a connection by just calling the create connection method on the mongoose package and providing the URL for my local database. So as you can see, my MongoDB server is running on my local host at this port and this is the name of the database. So whenever you run the script for the first time, the database is gonna be created by mongoose automatically. So you don't have to worry about that. So here I'm just gonna export uh, my connection object so I can use it later while accessing the database and performing some queries. All right, so another thing that you need to take care of is, since I'm running MongoDB on my local host, I have to make sure that I already have Mongo installed in my computer. So in order to do that, you just go on Google and say install MongoDB on Mac. So because I'm using a Mac computer here, I'm gonna show you the steps for Mac. You can do the same for Windows, just type install MongoDB on Windows. And you're gonna get the first link here for Mac OS and this is the official link from uh, MongoDB. So um, I'm just gonna go here and follow the steps. So you install Xcode first and then you use Brew to install MongoDB here. So once you do all these steps, just make sure that you are you are running the Mongo server by just opening your terminal and just write Mongo. Once you do that, you, it's going to take you to the Mongo shell and now you can perform MongoDB queries locally. For example, I will just do this, show DBS. So it's going to show all the databases that I have locally. Um, this case, your database is already created by Mongoose when I, when I ran the script for the first time. So I did not create it and you don't have to either. We'll see how to do that. All right, so once you make sure that you have Mongo installed and it's running in your local server, you will be good to go. All right, so now it's time to define collections or what you will call tables in SQL language. So first of all, I'm gonna define the customer collection. So in my customer collection, I have two fields. The first is name and the second is email. But in order to define the customer collection, what I would do is I'm gonna require the Mongoose package 
and also the connection. I'm going to require the connection object that I created in the last step. Now you define the collection by just using the schema class or the schema constructor on your mongoose package. So by and also by using the new keyword because we're defining a new schema. So we're telling mongoose what our customer collection will look like and what fields it will have, what would be the type of those fields, if they will be required and stuff like that. So let's see. Customer object will now be an instance of my schema here, my Mongo schema, and it's gonna take an object, and inside that object, we're gonna pass different fields that my customer collection is go going to have. So for example, my customer collection has a name, and it has an email. So the name, the type for the name is string. It's a required field. So we, it's like a compulsory field. We cannot leave it blank. The email field similarly is a type string as well. And it's a required field as well. So these are the two fields in my customer collection. Now I'm going to just call the model method on my connection object and pass my collection schema so pass my customer schema right here and tell mongoose that this is one of my models so if you've seen my previous videos on orm they're all about uh, sql based orms but something common is that we always use the model method to define the model or the table uh, using the orm so this is very similar to what we did here we use the model method on the connection object and we pass the schema that we defined in the previous step here. And we're basically telling Mongoose that this is what my collection looks like. These are the fields of my collection and consider it as a model. So we're telling Mongoose that we're ready with our first collection, the customer collection. And the next thing would be to export this collection so that we can use it later on while querying the database. Okay, so once we have a customer collection set up, we're going to do the next one, which is the orders collection. So in order to do that, we're going to do the, we're going to follow the same steps. So we want to require the mongoose package. Uh, we want to require the connection object and also the customer collection or the customer model. We're going to require the customer model as well because we have a relationship between our orders collection and our customer collection and the relationship is that one customer can have many orders so basically a uh, one to many relationship so we're going to define that let's see how we can define that using mongoose all right so in order to uh, define the schema for the order collection we're going to do um we're going to create a new instance of the mongoose schema and name it order it will have two fields the first field would be the total purchase price so basically the total and the next field is the customer ID. So this is basically a foreign key. And as you can see, we're gonna define the type, which is object ID, because here the object ID of our customer, so basically the ID of our customer that we don't define, it's like by default uh, field that you're gonna get in all the databases. So the ID field. So um, we're gonna we're gonna associate this ID field of the customer with the customer underscore ID field of the orders collection. So that's why you see type is object ID because by default uh, the type of ID in Mongoose is object ID. So now we provide the reference and the reference is that it's associated or like it's it has a relationship with the customer collection. So that's what we put here, customer. It's a required field as well. And we're gonna create the index here. So you can you can set index to true, false, or just skip this field. It's like an optional parameter, but I wanna do a lot of searches based on my customer underscore ID value. So that's why I created it to be an index so that my searches are efficient. So um, also the total field is a type number and it's required as well. So these are the two different fields in my order collection. And now I'm going to define, I'm going to just create the model and I'm going to call it order. And I'm going to pass my collection here. 
that's it that's all it's the same step that we did for the customer collection and now we're going to export the order collection as well because we're going to use it to query the database all right so that was straightforward we've defined both our collections our customer collection and our order collection and we've also defined the relationship between them and as you must have noticed in mongoose we did not care to define the kind of relationship that exists between our customer collection and our order collection so if you have seen um, again, like I'm saying this again, but like if you've seen my old videos on like my previous videos on different kinds of ORMs, we always define the type of relationship between the two collections. If it's a one to many relationship, many to one, many to many, whatever, we define the kind of relationship as well. But here in Mongoose, we did not define the kind of relationship. Mongo does not care about that. We just define the reference. And we just told Mongoose that uh, my orders collection is connected is is associated with another collection and the name of that collection is customer that's it that's all it doesn't care about what kind of relationship exists between them all right now that we've established a connection with our mongodb we have defined both our collections now it's time to move on to the most interesting part we're going to query the database so we're going to perform different kinds of queries we're going to do insertions deletion and uh, search and also insertion with foreign key. All right, so um, are you excited? I'm really excited. Okay, so we're gonna do the queries in our index.js file. I'm gonna require my customer collection and my order collection. Okay, so first of all, let's insert some documents inside our customer's collection. And if you are not yet familiar with the Mongol lingo, oh, it rhymes, Mongol lingo, a lot. So let me tell you, what you would call a table in SQL-based databases, you're gonna call collections in Mongo. And also each row inside the table is represented by a document in Mongo. So for example, each collection can have multiple documents. Similarly, each table can have multiple rows, right? And each row inside a table can have different values for different columns, right? So similarly, each document will have different values for different fields. And each document will have like all the fields that we define in our schema. So basically each collection is a collection of different documents. All right, so as I mentioned, let's insert some documents in our customer collection. Okay, but wait, before that, let me tell you something really very important. If you wanna to connect to your MongoDB locally, you can use a tool called MongoDB Compass. So um, let me show you how you can get it. You just go on the internet and say MongoDB Compass install and I think it will be the first link so you can just go there it's an official MongoDB link you can go and follow the steps for Windows, Mac OS and Linux and you can install MongoDB Compass I already have it let me show you how it looks like it looks like this MongoDB Compass and um, this is already set up but since it's a video where you learn everything from scratch it's my duty to show you if you open a new window so um, I will just quit this and if I open MongoDB Compass for the first time, let me show you how you can set it up. So this is going to take some time. It's going to load all the plugins. Okay, so this is the first page that you're going to see as soon as you install MongoDB Compass on your computer or your laptops or wherever. So what you want to do is you want to start a new connection. So either you can paste the uh, connection string of your database but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, fill in connection fields individually. And since my connection, my database is on the local host, you're good with the default parameters. So don't touch anything. Don't, uh, you don't need to fill like anything anywhere because it's going to connect to local host to seven, at the port 27017, which is the default port for MongoDB. And um, just click on connect. So this is going to establish a connection with your local server, your local MongoDB your local Mongo database server. And I already have the connection here. So I'm gonna double click on it and it's gonna open the window where I can see all my databases. So I already have this KS store set up as I already told you that I did not create it manually. This was created when I ran my script for the first time by Mongoose. So you're gonna see how. And I already have two collections, the customer collection and the orders collection. And I already have some documents so um, I'm gonna delete them for demonstration purposes. We're gonna do everything from scratch. So I'm gonna delete the order as well. 
Okay, so now you see my collections are empty. And now we're gonna start writing some code. So first of all, as we decided, let's insert some documents in the customer's collection. So for that, you just go customer dot insert. Now there's two ways you can use the customer dot create to just create like one document, just, just enter one document. And uh, also you can use the insert many method on the customer collection. Now using insert many as the name suggests, I'm gonna insert multiple documents at once. So since I'm gonna insert multiple documents at once, I'm gonna need an array. And inside that array, I will create two different objects. And now inside these objects, I'm gonna enter the fields that I have in the customer collection and the value of those fields. So I have a name. And this is the name that I wanna enter. And then I have an email field. So similarly, I'm gonna add the other object, which will be the second document. Okay, so this will insert two different documents in my customer collection, and I'm just gonna print it. So I'll say customers, and I'm just gonna console log it to see what was entered in my database. Okay, and like all good programmers, I'm also gonna catch any errors if I get them. All right, so let's run this code and see the magic. Okay, so I have the result here. Don't worry about the deprecation warning here. We're gonna ignore it. And I added a console log which said customers added. And these are the two customers that were added, Joey Tribbiani and Chandler Bay. Okay, perfect. So the console log seems all right, but now let's go to the database and see if these customers were actually inserted. So I'm gonna go here, go to my customer table. Oh, not the table, the collection. Sorry, yes. I've been using the SQL database a lot. So yeah, bad habit. So I'm gonna go to the customer collection. I'm gonna refresh it and voila, you, there you go. You have both the customers appropriately added. So each of these objects you see here, each of these entries, this is a document. So each document has a unique ID which is of type object ID that I was trying to explain you before. So this looks something like this, like a long uh, hex string. And these are the fields that I added for my customer's collection. Similarly, for the next document, you're gonna see all these fields. Okay, so looks like everything worked. Let's go and perform some other queries. Okay, now that we have two customers, let's go and delete a customer. So now to do that, I'm gonna use the delete one method on the customer collection. So on the customer model, and I'm gonna return it. So as you can see that these queries, they return a promise. So I'm, I'm using the dot then way of accessing these promise. You can use async await or callbacks, anything you want. Okay, so I'm gonna return the customer dot delete one. I'm gonna return the result from here, and then I'm gonna catch it here in another dot then block so that I can chain these promises very in a very clean way so it's easier to read. So, okay. So now what do I wanna delete? I wanna delete one of the documents from my customer collection. So I'm going to pass any one of the field for the document. So for example, I'm gonna pass the name here. So do you understand what kind of a query this is? This is like a delete from where query. So like delete from the customer collection where you see the name equals to Joey Trebiani. So that's what it's gonna do. And now I return the result here. I'm gonna get the return result here and say deleted customer. And I'm gonna print it as usual. So I'm gonna print, I'm gonna console log the result. Okay, so let's see what happens when I run the delete one query here? And there you go. Okay, so now since I run the script again, it's gonna add two more new customers called Joey Trebbiani and Chandler Bang, and then it's gonna delete one customer named Joey Trebbiani. So now you're gonna still see two entries of Chandler Bang and one entry of Joey Trebbiani. So let's go and validate this from our database. And I'm gonna hit refresh. And there you go.
two entries for Chandler Bing, but this is the newly created entry. And here you go. Since we deleted one of the Joey Tribbiani document, we still have the other one. So we successfully deleted a document using Mongoose. And also in the result that I printed, you see that OK one and deleted count one. So that means one document was successfully deleted. OK, next, what do we want to do? Let's go and find all the customers from the customer table so that we don't have to go and check the customers in using MongoDB Compass. We're going to see the list of the remaining customers here in our console. So I'm going to go do a customer.find. So this is like a select star from customer kind of a query. So I'm going to return the result again and cache the result in the next dot bin block. So I'll say remaining customers and then I'm going to console log it again. So a good old copy paste. So remaining, I'm going to edit it to just say remaining customers and use this variable to print the customers that are remaining on our, in our MongoDB customer collection. Okay. So let's go and run this. All right, so since I ran it again, you're gonna see, so two more entries would have been added for Joey Tribbiani and Chandler Bing. So one of the entries would be deleted, but we're still gonna see, I think three entries now. Yeah, for Chandler Bing and one for Joey Tribbiani. But since I can understand this can be confusing for you, I'm gonna delete everything from my customer collection and rerun my script so that you see the result crystal clear. So my customer collection is empty now. My orders collection should be empty as well. And I'm going to rerun the script. So for a refresher, we insert two different documents in our customer collection, one for Joy Tribbiani, the other for Chandler Bing. Then we delete one of these documents. So we delete the Joy Tribbiani document. And we're gonna next, we're going to find all the remaining customers, so all the remaining documents in our customer collection. So this is what we have done so far. I've emptied all my uh, collections in my MongoDB. So let's see what will happen when I run this script. Okay, so now the result that we have to expect is that we just want to see one document for Chandler Bing in our uh, customer collection. And I think this is what we see here. So customers added to then we deleted Joey Triviani and the remaining customer is Chandler Bing. All right, and let's go validate this in our customer collection using MongoDB Compass. And that there you go, that's what we found. So we just found one document for Chandler Bing. Perfect, so let's go ahead and add an order for our existing customer. So let's add an order for Chandler Bing. So this will be our insertion with the use of a foreign key. And in order to do that, I'm gonna go here and First of all, I want to save the customer ID in a variable. So because I'm going to use the customer ID to perform the insertion in the order collection. And how I can do it is I'm going to first fetch the customer ID here. I'm going to save it in this variable that I just created. And I'm going to get the customer ID from the remaining customers. And since we saw that the remaining customers was an array and the customer that I'm interested in was at the zeroth index of this array. So I'm going to access the zeroth index of my remaining customer. And then I'm going to use dot underscore ID field because that's how Mongo saved the default ID field in all the collections. We already saw that. Okay. So next I want to insert the order in the orders collection. So since it's a single document, I'm just going to use the dot create method on the orders collection and I'm going to pass an object. It won't take an array because I'm not inserting multiple documents like before, like I did here in the insert many, uh, when I use the insert many method, I'm just creating one single document. So I'm, it will take an object and in this object, I'm going to add the fields of that are present in my orders in my order collection so the first field is total the total purchase price which is 45 and the next field is customer underscore id 
So this customer ID is the ID of my existing customer, which, which I stored here in the customer capital I small d variable. So I'm gonna use this value for my customer underscore ID field of the orders collection. All right, so that's how we inserted, not yet, but we're gonna insert it when we run the code. I'm just gonna uh, return the result here so that I can cache the result here in another dot bin block. And I'm gonna say order. And now I'm gonna print this order that I will insert in the orders collection. So, and this order is associated or like this order is for the existing customers because it has the reference customer ID. So I'm going to say um, order here. I'm going to print the value of my order variable. And let's see what happens. Okay, from now on, whenever I run my script, I'm going to clean all the collections in my Mongo database so that it's easier so that it's easier for you to predict the correct outcome. Okay, so everything is cleaned up. Let's go run the script. And we see that two customers were added. One of the customer was deleted. The remaining customer was Channel Bay. And there was indeed an order that was inserted in the orders collection for Chandler Bing because I can see the customer ID here matches the customer ID of Chandler Bing. So you see, um, it ends with 9FD10C, here it ends with 9FD10C. So there you go, we successfully added an order for an existing customer who was Chandler Bing. Okay, so everything looks good in the console log. Let's go to the MongoDB compass and see if our customers and order was correctly inserted in the database. So we go to the customers collection and you see that the customer Chandler Bing was correctly added. So we see one document only. We don't see two different documents because we deleted the other one that was named Joey Trumpiani. And now we go to the orders collection and we see that the order was indeed successfully added and we see all the fields. The order total was 45. The customer ID is correct. We just validated it in the console log statements. Okay, next what we should do. So we're gonna find the order for this particular customer, for our existing customer, for Chandler Bay, so that we don't have to come to the MongoDB compass and see if the order was correctly added, right? We're gonna see it in our console. So let's find this order. And in order to do that, I'm gonna do the order.find query. So you saw that I've already used this query before when I wanted to find all the customers. So, but I did not pass any object or any parameter in my find method. So this was like a general select star from the table name kind of a query, but now I want a select star from where kind of a query. So we, I want a conditional select. So that's why I'm gonna do order.find, but I'm also gonna, going to pass an object inside my find method to say that I wanna find the document where my customer ID equals this value because I want to find all the orders related to my existing customer with this customer ID, right? So that's what I'm going to do here and I will return the result here so I can catch it in my next dot then block and I'm going to say, um, so because I already used the order variable, I'm going to say selected order this time and the same thing again, I'm going to console log this variable to see all the orders placed by our existing customer with the current customer ID. Let's go and run the script again. So before that, I'm gonna clean up all my collections. I'm gonna run it again to see what happens. All right, so let's go take a look at the result. We're gonna ignore the deprecation warning. So customer added, two customers were added, then one was deleted. The remaining customer was Chanlabang. The existing customer's order was this. And now you see that the order ID is different because there was a new order that was placed and a new customer was created. So I have a different customer ID, but it matches the customer underscore ID field in my orders table. So the order was correctly placed and the existing customer selected order. So this was the select star from where, so basically the order dot find query that I did that was the last query that I did. And I have the correct document being returned. 
but it's an array because I want to return all the documents related to the order of our existing customer. So like all the orders that our existing customer placed. So there can be multiple, that's why this is an array. And we just have one document. We just placed one order for our existing customer. So there you go. The IDs match and we were correctly able to select and return all the orders based by our existing customers. So there you go. We did a lot of stuff using Mongoose. For a refresher, we inserted many documents. We deleted one of the documents. And similarly here, you can use delete many as well to delete multiple documents. And um, then we find, we used the find method without any parameter. And then we inserted a document in our orders collection using the foreign key concept. So we also define the relationship between our customer's table and orders table, and we use that relationship to, to perform the ins insertion. So we use the parameterized find method as well. And then we printed the result, and then we catch any errors if we have any, and we basically throw them. Also, if you wanna know how I know about all these options and all these methods, it's really easy. So you just go over the internet or Google and you just type mongoose. So you're going to find the first link that's going to pop on your screen. I think that's, yeah, mongoose.js. So this is their API documentation, all the methods. And this is basically the official documentation. All the methods, all the operations that you can do on your Mongo database using mongoose are listed here. You can just go through them. All right, so I'll see you in the studio for the outro. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for making it till the end of the video. Let me know how you like the video by clicking the thumbs up button and also leave a comment down below if you like the video and if you want me to cover any more ORMs, any specific ORM that you would like me to cover, just let me know and I'll do that. And also if you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. What are you waiting for? And you will be one of the first ones to receive any update from us and whenever we push a new video, you're gonna get the notification. So it's good for you and it's a great motivation for us as well to keep on pushing new content and improve, improve ourselves and get better and better. Also, if you want to get a scoop of our daily lives, connect on our Instagram channel. The link will be down in the description as usual. You can connect with us on LinkedIn as well, on Twitter. And we also publish a newsletter every week. So if you want, you can go ahead and sign up for the newsletter on the immigrantprogrammers.com, our website. And we know your inbox is sacred, so we won't spam you, I promise. So with that said, I want to leave you with an end note. I know it's so hot in some countries if you're like in the summer season right now. So keep your fluids high, drink a lot of water, keep hydrated. And that's it. That's all. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. Bye. Have a great day.